the IPL5 seeding. All these teams have qualified. It's just a matter of which order will we put them in the groups and the first place team, who will it be and who will get the trip to Vegas on IPL's dime. Alternate going to be on uh, blue side. First band, first pick. Wow, and Evelyn, not even risking it. Despite the nerfs to DFG and the ultimate, be safe, take out Evelyn. Lee Sin going to be next on the chopping block. Yeah, I mean, Lee Sin definitely makes sense as far as junglers are concerned. We're seeing him rise back in popularity. Yeah. He's just so strong all around. He can sustain through the jungle very easily. He's you know great at counter jungling. I mean, it's his mobility. And watching you know Diamond Prox in particular, when you watch him play Lee Sin, he's not a standard jungler. You're not like, okay, let me kill the minions, then let me gank, let me you know kill the minions some more. Lee Sin, literally, the way Diamond Prox plays him, is he's going to do whatever the hell he wants. He just runs in and out of the jungle. He does, you know, incredibly risky stuff, and he's just, like, constantly pushing the, you know, the edge and pushing the envelope. But he has the mobility to get out, so he just knows, you know, I can be stupid, crazy aggressive in the jungle and know that I can get out. I can just drop a ward, shield yep. over a wall, or anything like that. And so it's it's a really cool play style. So they ban him out. Evelyn Zillion, this is almost like we're playing M5. And it we, is. We talked well, about how cursed. They've yep. been scrimming M5, and uh, so, you know, picking up that same play style on Extinct. Yep. And if, if, by the way, if you want to actually watch some amazing Lee Sin play, actually go back to yesterday's VODs. Those were, that was some amazing, amazing leap. It's always amazing to see M5 play Lee Sin, period. Because you know there's going to be huge plays, tower dives, crazy kills. You're going to love it. Uh, and also, not even risking the Rengar either. Despite his nerfs, be safe, ban him out too. You might as well. Well, it, like I said, he's still unbelievable in the jungle. They, yep. The Rengar nerfs, it didn't stop his jungling presence at all, or at least I don't think it will, because it's really a minor nerf as far as jungle Rengar. That's why the nerf to the, the cooldown of the ultimate was necessary, because jungle Rengar is still going to be a monster. So they get rid of him. They also get rid of Jace, which is interesting, because, um, you know, we've seen Angus, he plays a strong Jace, and he plays yep. a strong Shen. And Shen versus Jace is a very common matchup that we've seen in the past, but by, by banning Jace, they leave Shen open. So I, I kind of would have thought they would have uh, left both Jace and Shen open and then taken who was left over. But uh, they end up banning him out. And so now they kind of have a choice to make in that top lane. But yeah. they can still grab the Sona that's very strong for them and, uh, you know, have a lot of options open. Ezreal is down, so they might grab Corky here as well. Yeah, he's, Corky's still open. Graves is also still open, part of that trinity. Uh, but we've also been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of other ADs. We haven't seen a yeah. whole lot of play up. We saw some MF yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Caitlyn's been coming on back too. Yeah, Kog'Maw, um, yeah, all of them. Kog'Maw, everyone. This is actually this is the perfect time for experimentation. This is you know this is this is Curse's this, opportunity. Yeah. Same thing with alternate. Their opportunity to get a leg up by trying something unusual. You know, just think. All right, what do we want to do with the new patch? They can be like, okay, well, let's run Varus. Oh, all right, well, that's interesting. Might as then well. Then mid lane, <laughs> let's run. You know. Um, another champion that's maybe not seen that much like Cassidy uh, hasn't been seen in a while and uh, we've seen you know them run him in some in the past but we'll see they do pick the Corky I thought that was going to be um, the most expected pick because yeah. Corky's still incredibly strong and will turn into that early game kind of uh, AD carry that Ezreal was yep and uh, we got the Orianna also still open very popular in her own right too oh, and it's it's for all and lords. It is for all best champion, but it is, it is and not nerfed with the recent patch. Also not nerfed. Uh, well, it, well, the, well, we talked about the DFG, but still, you're usually going to be right, seeing Oriana yeah. rush into something like a Thien's first item anyway. But it will be a Blitzcrank Graves lane down bot for alternate coming on in. Yeah, that's a really aggressive lane. We've seen it a lot in the past, but. Um, I don't know. In response, they kind of have to decide if they want to try and you know switch lanes and do a split push against that. Um, they probably want whoever their top lane to, is is going to want to uh, be able to deal with a, a split if alternate decides to uh, um, you know split push Shen or if they decide to swap the bot lane and top lane. So someone like Olaf would work there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure what. Uh, Angus is going to play outside. I've, I know I've, played, I've seen him play uh, Jason Shen in the past. Uh, Malphite's open. They could go with the Malphite pick. And actually, I, I really would like to see the Orianna pick here, but I don't remember if Extinct plays Orianna. I don't know if I've ever seen him play Orianna. Um, so, you know, Let's we'll see. see if they take him off of Pharrell and Lord. I mean, that's definitely probably Pharrell and Lord's best champion. Frantically looking through my notes just to look at the uh, look at the previous matches oh, we've actually seen them. So he does play it. There is the Oriana. I, I assumed he plays it, obviously, yeah. but um, I couldn't remember the last time. Oh, no. 
no, last second, swapping to Riven and Cho'Gath. Not interesting. So Cho'Gath more than likely going to be in a jungle and Riven going top lane to try and defend against the Shen push. So yeah, they're leaving their options open. I think uh, I think there's a little bit of paranoia between both, both of the teams. Like, do we want them to have Orianna? Are they trying to, to bluff us? Or do, do they want us to pick Orianna to you know, get us into a situation we don't want to? Because even if there wasn't Orianna pick right in there, there's really not an effective means for them to actually get off like the full combo that they want. Like who's gonna who's gonna charge in exactly? Corky? No, you're not gonna put the vol on him, having Valkyrie on in and try and get your ultimate. And granted, Orianna is more of a protection-based mid. You have the shield, you have the poke to try and you know, keep your backline safe. But uh, I don't think the way Curse is going right now that they really have the ideal team to support Orianna. Granted, they could still pick her, but uh, it, I, I, it, there could have been there could be some other options. Yeah, I think the concern for Curse right now is that Shen is going to be moving into that jungle. So it's going to be an Olaf top and uh, Shen in the jungle. And Olaf, you know, he's a very strong top laner. It's it's kind of an even match between Olaf and Riven. Um, so we'll see what they do, um, you know, how they do in that match. Olaf can get an early advantage, but so can Riven. So it's, I mean, it really could be back and forth. And uh, last pick, so going with the Vladimir, I that's actually a really like good it. pick. I you, We haven't seen Vladimir mid for a while, but um, he kind of moves in and out, and when he's in the mid lane, literally almost no one can harass him. Like, he's going to farm. It's a free farm lane with Vladimir, and Vladimir in the mid game when he's free farming is just absolutely absurd. You can rush a haunting guys. You can, you know, rush some quick damage items and just control the game. But the things are going to be getting a little bit hairy once both of the mid champs start hitting six, because you do have, you're going up against Ari, who is pretty damn mobile in her own right and you have, you have to be careful for those attempted ganks up and top and down bot baby switching it up is the oriana still actually going to be coming into effect here curse is thinking about a few decisions pantheon would be hilarious i'd love to see a pantheon mid uh but i don't think it's actually going to be happening will will it be the lock yes that will be the oriana actually going to be going here for curse so these are your teams and just a matter of uh going back to <laughs> going back to the screen going back to team select um but it, it could it's, uh, it, I think th I think there is also still a possibility though between switches top and jungle Shen and all because we're not quite sure we're not going to know for a hundred percent certain who's going in jungle who's going top until we get that lock until the spectator delay actually kicks in. Yeah, no, that I mean that is always the potential. They they do have those, that option, but we've seen Metalax in the past play uh, that jungle Shen right. and um, oh, so it really could go either way. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see where they go. They played it against M5 yesterday. It didn't really work because of the mm. aggressive counter jungling from Diamond Prox. But uh, they definitely have that option. I think the Oriana pick is kind of interesting, though, because um, you know, we kind of went back and forth on it and whether or not Curse would want to pick it. And Oriana will work well with Riven. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, The shields will help protect Riven a little bit. So uh, Riven has a double shield. It'll allow her to be incredibly aggressive. But you look at Alternate's team, and they have a lot of single target damage. They can just really quickly pick off Riven in that front line. Uh, so Riven's going to be in a dangerous spot. And then you also also consider outside of Riven, they don't have the best means of you know getting that Orianna ultimate into the team. So Orianna really playing more of a poking role um, than that you know AOE initiation that you see sometimes. So we'll we'll kind of see where they go with that. If Riven can get into the backline for Graves though, that's going to be devastating for alternate. I mean that's going to be an almost instant win yeah. for in a team fight for Curse. But it's actually not Riven. It's Aurelia. Oh. So. Uh, Aurelia, and now it kind of makes more sense. So they are sending Olaf top, and Olaf versus Aurelia is a really common lane matchup. Um, but yeah, so not going to be the Riven, which was kind of more of an unusual pick. And Aurelia definitely has a much uh, easier time of diving into that back line and is much safer than Riven is. So she's right. going to be able to dive in and initiate that Orion ultimate, which is something that they lacked with uh, with the Riven. Yeah. I do. I would have liked to have seen the Riven though, I mean, just just to have a little bit more, a little bit more takingness. But the Aurelia does provide more sustain there in the top lane. We'll be able to stick it out up against the off. I'll be honest. I was a little confused because usually you see Riven against squishy champions, against mm. champions that you know uh, you can take advantage of Riven's burst damage and try and snowball or you know right. try and um, you know just build a lot of damage and then just dive into the middle of them in fights and crush them. And that wasn't what Alternate had. They had kind of more of a tanky lineup except for uh, Graves. Um, so you know, it, it definitely, uh, I, I feel a little bit more confident with that Aurelia pick for Curse. But there, we have seen in the past, you know, here and there, actually a few uh, Rivens in the jungle for those early ganks. Those early ganks could have actually been rather devastating if they decided to go with it, have just throw Cho'Gath actually uh, up top lane just to, you know, Passive farm, just trying, and he has the health. He has the sustain up against Olaf or Shen. And he can just, he just stick it out with Shen too. He's like, oh, you're gonna taunt me while well, I got tons of health. I'm just gonna feast on some minions. It's no big deal. Yeah, that is uh, something you know that was always a threat, but. Um 
we'll, we'll see where they're going with this. Checking out some runes real quick. Uh, no movement speed, which is pretty common a lot of times on Orianna, but mm -hmm. mana regen, some you know, quick damage. Uh, 21, 0, and 9, so nothing that unusual. Um, I'm kind of curious, the teleport for Shen, you mm -hmm. know, how uh, Angus is going to try and take advantage of that. Because Angus, he does play a lot of Shen himself, and knowing that he has the ignite advantage over Shen, it should give him a minor leg up on that lane, but it's it's actually not going to allow him to push quite as aggressively against Shen. Shen right. can use that teleport to, you know, be mobile, but then he could just use his ult and then come back in the lane with the teleport. And there's also the threat that uh, alternate, they might do something cheesy early on. They might, you know, try for some sort of early aggressive invade and then have the top advantage. So, um, you know, if they go for a uh, blue side, if they go for invade on purple's blue, Shen could maybe be with the team, then be able to teleport top. And it also opens up the possibility for uh, more aggressive lane swaps on alternate side. Yeah, and one of the best things you can do when you're up against the Shen in lane is actually not really force anything on that lane. You force you be aggressive in other lanes once he's hit six. You force the teleport, force him to leave his own lane. But yeah, with that teleport, he should be able to get back. He should be able to utilize it, utilize it pretty well. And the late game, yeah, we can go for a, possibly a cheesy, uh, a cheesy base teleport if the situation is right. Or he can keep the, uh, the split push aggression ever so high. It's like, well, I already have my ult. Well, I guess I'll just have to use my teleport. And taking a look at the runes and masters real quick, uh, Kerp actually running movement speed on the jungle Olaf. And um, Olaf is incredibly fast in the jungle. So it's it's going to be Olaf versus Cho. And they have, you know, both have decent jungling speed, but Olaf actually has a little is a little bit faster. And he can actually uh, invade some and then escape from ganks, you know, just using his ultimate or using his axes uh, to get out of there. So that's going to be a nice little advantage for them um, that they might want to take uh, advantage of. Looking a little bit more here, so we got zero twenty one on uh, nine there. Onto Cho Gath, gonna be a very tanky Cho coming in for those ganks from the jungle. You also got Angus here, got some health regen nine twelve nine, not too bad. Nothing really too, nothing really too out of the ordinary real, uh, coming from these runes masters, but we should be in in just a little bit. You also got uh, Corky with the summoner heal, try and get those baits on in because you know aggressive combo because you do have uh, the ignite down onto the Sona to try and bait something out. Uh, same actually thing from uh, from alternate. You got the ignite onto the blitz and the heal summoner heal onto graves, and we're actually starting to see that a little bit more often because we usually used to see ignite on the AD carry and uh, exhaust coming out onto support. Why is this? change up now happening to the heal well we've seen heal for um on support like mixed in a lot of times they would go with the ignite but sometimes you would see the heal and part of the reasoning is that ignite it's it's an offensive summoner on your ad carry and your ad carry's primary focus needs to be on positioning and the heal it's not a targeted uh, targetable ability um so that's at the very least why you see the heal on the AD carry as opposed to on the uh, support because it's a non-targeted ability. So the, the AD carry can just focus on um, constant positioning. But as far as offensive summoners are concerned, exhaust, if you already have a decent amount of CC, exhaust is really used to guarantee kills. I mean, exhaust... Um, you know, it can shut down uh, with the blind. It can shut down the other AD carries damage. But usually you're using it for the slow to just, you know, pick up a kill here. So you can still, with all of the CC that they have, they can still pick up those kills. Like, it's not going to... Losing the exhaust isn't going to ask, crush them in that lane. And we're seeing teams l less and less going for those really aggressive gang spot where they're going to want to uh, try and pick up kills and, you know, snowball from that. And more and more just kind of farming, harassing some. So heal, it's both defensive and offensive. It's that kind of kind of versatility exhaust was too but yeah um so yeah we'll, we'll see where they go with that i think part of it is also the kind of junglers that you are playing against um olaf you know isn't the greatest ganker he, he's decent like if he lands an undertow then uh he's gonna be able to chase you down yeah. but, but if you dodge the undertow he's not really gonna do much but some offensive junglers that have uh really our physical junglers have really strong initiation um you know champions like uh you know shivana for instance um, you might want to use the exhaust against them to shut them down. And so, you know, not going up against that kind of jungler, like Cho, for instance. His yeah. ganks, if, he's not, if he doesn't land the rupture, then his gank's not going to be successful. And using exhaust on Cho isn't going to help you when he comes ganking. Um, so really, you just want to have good positioning, and that's kind of what the heal helps for. Yep, and these are also not the only two junglers where, you know, getting that initial skill is really vital. Like Amumu, Amumu, I think, is, you know, is one, of, uh, one of the telltale signs, too. It's like, hey, if you don't get the bandage toss, you're not getting anything on this gank. Uh, to an extent, too, you also have champs like Maokai, who've actually gotten, uh, you know, are still up there, still very popular. If you can't close the gap, you don't get close to the advance, you don't get your gank, and everybody's sad, and everyone's unhappy. But... Uh, We'll see. We'll see how the junglers come into play here. Underway, alternate was spotted 
actually going on in to Curse's Blue, and Curse is actually waiting upon their return to see if they'll actually come on back up through a Triumph for Elnord. Lord. Right there in the front of the bush, he's oh. out there running into... Wow. Oh, wow. He's as dead as can there, be. There was no... He went down so quick, there was no time for a single summoner. Not a single one. Not one was blown. That is super efficient. Great, great kill for Curse. Yeah, it's, it's just the chain CC. They're able to drop him very quickly. And, wow. Um, I don't know, that, the lack of uh, <laughs> knowledge there, they, they walked right into the ward and they, they didn't notice Sona putting it down. Blitzcrank wasn't quite there. Uh, you know, they maybe could have gotten a hook if they were sitting in this next bush, but they really put themselves in a bad spot. And sometimes you have to just kind of recognize that there might be a ward if you don't know where the enemy is, but he decided to just walk out on his own rather than yeah. uh, walking in as a team. Um, so small advantage. It's actually for Aurelia up in that top lane, so that's going to be really nice for her against that Shen. But uh, we'll see. It shouldn't set the junglers at too much of a you know change of pace. Uh, it really is only going to impact that top lane. Yeah. And it, it actually helps because uh, the lanes are swapping. So um, you know Aurelia would have been comfortable with that swap, but both teams are swapping, and we'll see how that works. <laughs> and both the AD carries are actually uh, meeting up here in the top rivers. Like, oh, you guys had the same plan we did. But Kerp going on and getting another axe, barely getting a flash. But Kerp wants his kill. He flashes in pursuit. Summoner Hill being used. Metal Axe grabbing the kill down on a Creighton. You got the orb still looking for more damage. Can Leo get a hook, though? That's I'm, the question. That would be huge. But there's a huge line of minions, and there's a minion blocking the path perfectly the he minion didn't he even move or anything he just he walked just, up and hooked the minion yeah it's like i'm so frustrated i can't get you guys you're too close to tower uh, minion uh, i'm angry yeah but they're in a great situation to take this red here Herkbot, he's coming up he's actually walking right into him trying to stop this but with the slows they might be able to turn this around there's Super Ace trying to get some burst damage but isn't quite enough to stop them there's the smite kerp is able to steal that so uh turning it around and actually this is a significant advantage um you know aurelia is in a nice uh lead in the bot but shen's a pretty safe laner so it won't matter but yeah. the jungling advantage could really help them out a lot and having an 80 carry get a kill is really uh harmful early on yeah and metal actually he's gonna choose not to back quite yet to buy anything he's just gonna hold on to that money possibly get an early bf sword or something of the like uh olaf going on back he's gonna get a regrowth pendant <laughs> With all that money that he just earned, he's going to go for that early Fila, start checking those GP10s. And Aurelia with that first blood money uh, actually ended up getting the Doran Shield to just withstand against Shen a little bit easier. That extra health regen is going to help keep her in lane for quite a while because she really starts rolling. She can sustain lane forever once she hits six, once she hits that ultimate. That just gets so much life back. She can just sustain it forever, and that shield is going to help her get there. Yeah, it will be mostly a passive farm lane. Uh, Herkbot actually coming for the mid. Oriana might be in a dangerous spot here. I don't know if they have the CC, but if the rupture lands, it would have been enough. The flash from Pharrell and Lord, he's able yep. to back out of there pretty easily. So his flash is down, but um, he does live for another day. He will back. The lane is pushed up against him, so you know when he gets back, it should be pushed back up to his tower. And now Angus kind of getting caught out himself. The red buff, it should be enough to take him down. He's going to have a flash of his own trying to get out of there. The undertow, it does miss on the follow-up. So not having the taunt for the uh, the second try, but Angus is in a dangerous spot. He has to play a little bit uh, conservatively against Shen right here. Yep. Kerp, sad that he didn't get his gank, though, is going to be falling on back. He did have uh, Ari full back to just regain some of that health. Got the uh, got the null magic mantle. Just so the uh, just the damage, just the harass from Orianna coming in is just a little bit less. It's more likely going to be built into a chalice later on. Ori did also back. Got some. Got a ward. Also got a Doran's ring for a little bit extra mana regen, health, and AP. Just so you can stay in the lane a little bit longer and keep on keep that harass up. And there's Cotton X using the that teleport straight away. He's you know, like, you know what? Swap, swap. Let's swap back again. Metal X and Leo now here in the bot. But Herc looking for ganks, looking for kills. Duh, the rupture not going to be getting Leo. He does use the flash to get out of that and just going to burn off that ignite. Easy peasy. Yeah, and going back to what you were saying about the Chalice, um, that is something that we've seen more and more from Ari uh, recently. Like, a lot of times Ari was just played as a burst caster, yeah. and uh, you wanted to dive in and get some damage. But mid lane in particular, it's turned into more of a pushing uh, war. It's, it's a lot less about getting early kills or, um, you know, uh, trying to burst down your opponent like we've seen in the past and so which against a champion like oriana who actually wins the mana battle they could actually uh nice. ari could really use that chalice it'll help her push uh, more effectively against oriana and be safer in that lane herc considering that he was grabbed has decided to actually commit for a little bit try and get some damage down onto blitz making some room open and allowing the swap to happen yet again so you got corky and soda now back here in the bot lane to follow up with the graves 
and the Bliss Crank. And uh, the Rupture will actually hit on Kerp as he's now entering the bot lane. But oh, there's the a hook. wonderful hook down on his Super Ace, threading the needle through all of those minis. And as a kill, Kerp going to get credit for that one. Are they still going to keep going? You got the smoke screen actually making Corky a little bit confused. Free shots from Graves in the retreat. But Kerp is still hungry for more. But you do have the Phosphorus Bomb keeping him back, throwing off a huge chunk of damage off his bar. But there's the Corky, he has no choice. He has to camp out the tower with about 100 health, drinking the potions as much as he can. Leo was trying to get another grab, and if he could, that would have been amazing. But happy with his results, Olaf goes back and grabs that Philo Stone. Yeah, a really nice advantage there. I, they might actually go for Creatine here. Uh, Metalex just, you know, backing off a second. He's going to be able to, um, you know, outfarm uh, Corky as a result. He already has a nice little lead there. Uh, not really showing in items yet, but maybe the next buyback here, it'll, you know, put him ahead and he can start to abuse Corky some. But it's it's kind of tough. Corky's really a safe laner. Corky can just sit back and farm when he's behind. So it, it shouldn't be that much of an advantage. Uh, you see Cotton X is slightly ahead, but really it's because of this minion wave. So um, Angus is going to hit six there as well. Yeah, but they, they do have to start worrying about that Shen presence that shouldn't all, all around the map. Yep. And you also uh, you go back to mid too. You see Oriana actually edging out a little bit of a farm lead over Ari so far. Not to mention you also have the assist credit too. So that's even a little bit, so even more gold and experience on top of Frown Lord at the moment. But uh, Ori is out of mana, cannot be keeping that poke up for long. Will eventually have to back. So you got uh, Herkbot actually here in the mid, can run some interference. It's like, hey, you know what? Our blue is up. I think you might want to have that. It's actually, uh, Cho's actually going to start that while Ari's actually being past hers by Olaf. Yeah, so having that spam ability is going to help both of those champions. Um, you know, neither of them getting deep in their builds yet, so it, it really is just going to be a pushing battle for a little bit. But there is the potential for both of them to try and roam out of that lane and, um, you know, pick up kills, particularly for Ari. Oh, yeah. In the meantime, we do see Kerp coming up top. Not really going to have a great angle on Angus, so I guess yeah, he's, he's actually covering. just holding the lane for Cotton X for a little bit. So uh, nice little, you know, support there. Kind of he's going back. What is he end up, gonna end up buying? He's got the heart of gold, so he's looking to snowball a little bit in terms of the income. The farm is actually quite even, but you recognize, okay, Aurelia's got a GP5, GP10. I need to get a GP10, so I just don't start falling behind. And it's that kind of, uh, it's that investment war to make sure that you can get your GP10 as quickly as possible. So you just don't lose out on too much income in the face of your lane opponent. Oh, but right now, for own Lord, he's going for the gank. That's what we were talking about, the roaming and Super yes. Ace. He drops a ward, but they have to get out of there quickly because for own Lord, he's going to alt in. There's the Shen ult as well. They can pick up this kill very easily. Shen gets the taunt. For own Lord getting kind of low, but the Blitzcrank nice. hook, he's going to set it up. Orianna's here as well, and it's an all-out brawl, but can Metal X finish this up? They try and get the kill, and actually Shen picks it up, but then Metal X, he's almost dying to the turret. Creaton's going to be able to chase him down, and it does actually all split, and they uh, have Orianna trying to chase down Metal X as the rest of them try and get out. <laughs> Metalux is trying to juke the Ori, but with the vision from the orb, that's going to be a nearly impossible. But near a point blank hook, just to get Herkbot a little bit closer, there's the pop up. The cooldown finally went down, and with that, Cotton X getting the credit for the kill onto the Cho. So it's. it's that it's, at least made it worth it. It, it made it worth it. It made it worth it, yes. It turned around against them. Curse actually pulled ahead of that fight because of the uh, uh, Corky, you know, getting winning the exchange. He didn't get the kill, but he gets some free farm time. But extinct, way out of position as Shen comes in once again. <laughs> and the lack of ward coverage really hurting them right now. Kai and X coming from behind with the taunt. Very well timed. Great positioning. Extinct's gonna be falling there, and for Elm Lord having some time there to farm. And I believe that's also a way. Uh, actually, we got blue buff actually there on a. Uh, like, no, I, that was a recall. I, I can't. I can barely see colors at this point, <laughs> right in the bushes. So blue buff, I believe that was actually refreshed onto uh, for Elm Lord then, because he got the kill onto. Yes. Uh, yes, there you go. To get the kill down onto Extinct, so that's a fresh blue buff. Going to be returning into mid with there, and uh, Extinct though does not uh, does not quite have the Athenes yet. Does have the Chalice, so it's going to be there to hedge off some of the extra mana regen that Frown Lord is going to be having on that blue buff. I think it's interesting though to note Corky actually going with the Ninja Tabby, and um, you know there's a decent amount of physical damage. I mean he has to deal with Kerp and Metal X, but we've seen uh, Ezreal start to move more and more towards that Ninja Tabby and talk about that some, and he uses it for uh, you know to win his lane. Um, to be able to exchange harass a little bit more effectively. Yep. But Corky, you know, 
you're going to tend to see a more, more offensive item uh, go with like the Berserker Greaves or something. But it maybe shows that he's kind of a little bit scared of, you know, the damage that Metalex is going to be outputting. If he gets hooked by Blitzcrank, uh, he knows he's going to drop pretty quickly. Yep. And so that Ninja Tabby, it's going to help him out a lot in lane. And maybe he's taking the presence of that early game laner. And we've also seen uh, Ezreal's actually start to take up those Tabbies too, just to help uh, win that lane. But Ronald using the ultimate, wants to get a little bit more damage down on see, but there is the teleport coming on in. Uh, I believe it was actually canceled though. You got, whoa, some strange interaction with the pullback on the Oriana all flashing out, but oh, the charm wow. that gonna was help. Perfect. The great charm to set everything up for the Undertow. That was a fantastic oh, kill. Oh, really is trying to come down, see if he can cut off uh, Pharrell and Lord here. Super is getting low on bot lane though, while all the while everyone is still scrambling to get away. There is a Sodal, it has to be used, but Metalux, he can still get some damage down onto Corky. The Ignite goes down, but he will back off to Tower Angus. He's looking for that kill. Did you recall in the middle of your towers? No, you did not. No kill for me, sad panda. So not quite able to get that, but still that exchange in the mid was really impressive. Um, you know, getting the hook onto Cho so that Olaf could come in and help out when they were that low. Um, you know, definitely doing a nice job there. Cho really needs to start building some stacks on his feast. He hasn't uh, quite gotten any yet. And so, uh, you know, that goes to show with that previous fight yeah. how he's kind of squishy. But, oh, Blitzcrank, he can get this hook. Kreaton's in a really dangerous situation if he decides to go in for this. He's just waiting for his moment. He knows there's a little bit, still a little bit too much movement. And here it comes once he's got that movement speed. He wants the uppercut first, but he's against it because he's also got the Shen with him. There is the hook, perfectly timed right when Shen comes in, right with that taunt. Wonderful kill. Metal Hook's getting the credit on that one. Shen is everywhere today. Oh, the juke from Kerp dodging Man. that rupture there and chasing down Herkbot. I think he's going to be able to get this. Herkbot, he's just get, he's too slowed. He cannot escape this in Kerp getting credit. Kill. Nice flash taunt. They want more cotton. Next wonderful play with the hook from Blitz. Double kill for Kerp. It's too much coordination from alternate right now. This is way too insane. And there's the, the teleport and the Shen ultimate into play together. They want to be aggressive. They want to make sure that Shen is everyone on the map. And with both the summoner and the ult, he is he has all the time in the world to go ahead and do it. And this is very similar to what we've been seeing from a lot of the Asian teams, um, you know, from the World Championship. And it's that roaming style, looking for constant uh, early fights as a team and just uh, looking for, you know, those winning situations. And so far, alternate, they've really taken advantage of this game by just roaming as a team, uh, moving around back and forth. They're using that mobility. Whereas the one time that Curse was successful was when Oriana left the mid lane to help him out and when they countered that out. And that's actually a lot of times what you can do uh, when you're playing against a really aggressive team that's roaming is you, you try and catch them off guard. You catch them out of a position by, uh, you know, bringing backup members. And right now, for the most part, other than that one fight, Curse is just sitting in lane. Angus, for the most part, he's been, you know, uh, sitting in his lane farming almost the entire game, and he is actually going to go back up top. So that while they're sitting in lane, it's allowing alternate to pull ahead by, you know, forcing these small engages, and it's it's resulted in a huge advantage early on. Yeah. And it's risky, too, though, because leaving lane for so long, imagine if yeah. Cotton X didn't get those kills, didn't get those assists. Well, you can see they're behind you on can, farm. Right. Um, not significantly, uh, significantly. It's really only the Shen lane that's right. slightly behind. But he's um, been the one who's been leaving right. most to, to make all these plays. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, they have, uh, I mean, it, it's a minor threat. Like, that's, you know, why people like that farming style, because it, it gives you consistency. You know what you're going to get out of it when you're farming. You know, all right, at this point in the game, I'm going to have these items, and I'm going to be able to fight effectively. But uh, if you can pick up the kills, it definitely is worth it, and alternate's definitely doing a good job, particularly getting Olaf fed early on. And Olaf, early in the game, I mean, the mid-game in particular, he's incredibly tanky and has high, very high base damage, so that's going to allow him to really take control of the game. The missed hook on Leo from Korea, but Herkbot's coming down. He's going to try for a rupture, or maybe they're just going to zone them here so it seems they're going to zone them for this tower he's, but they have to worry about Olaf. He's got to kill time just kill time until Olaf comes in there is a ward in the tribe where she spies like holy crap the guy's coming we got a GTFO and Pharrell Lord is actually making his move down here too. Ward in front of the dragon pit will actually spot There's him no out tower. and curse they need to run and they need to run quickly there's a rupture from Cho will not be laying his mark but Pharrell Lord using the ultimate he needs to close the gap there is the stone ult being forced out flashes just to get out of there does not land the charm but Kreaton is left a little bit too far behind the Herkbot game pulled and that is another kill onto Cho feel, forcing the heal on out and that makes a double for alternate extinct though over the wall getting a wonderful ult getting four members of alternate but there is the taunt 
another charm, everything. Oriana is not going anywhere. Yeah, and the heal protecting them, you know, from it, uh, going down there. They're a little bit low, but not really a concern. And you see Cotton next, he wasn't even really involved with that fight, but he came down anyway to help his team. Yeah. And it's, it's that kind of team backup support. They're really pressuring the bottom lane aggressively, and it's resulted in a really nasty lead uh, for alternate. They will be able to take this dragon as well. Aurelia does get a minor push up top, but you know, one turret for all of the kills and the dragon that they're getting at this point, it's easily yeah. worth it. They're pulling ahead uh, further and further all the time. The ta second tower is actually being pressured as well, so they need to get someone up there. But Crank, he probably will be able to force Angus back because he's going to be threatened. But um, it's still, it's it's yeah. down low enough that the next fight could take it. It's just time delayed. He's going to get the pop up. It's like, well, that ta uh, thankfully that ca uh, the uh, cannon mini was actually there for uh, Angus to take down all of those turrets. Otherwise, if it was just a regular standard minion, you would have been taking tower shots all the way back during his retreat. But yeah, alternate in a great spot right now. Looking at uh, only about a little bit over a 4K gold lead at the moment on the 17th minute. And also you see the items being picked up too. Ari actually is yet to uh, finish off that Athenes, but should be done soon. Oh, we may have another kill onto Extinctor. The charm actually going on down, forcing the flash on out. It's recognizing that Kerp is not too far behind. But here comes Blitz right in the middle of the lane. If he gets a hook onto Super Rays, the uh, Sona ult is now down. We used in the last fight, so that could mean a quick death. And here comes Metal X looking to keep is away the Corky. Is he strong enough to chase down Corky? I, I don't know. Uh, Corky has the damage, well, but there's the there's Shen, a Shen also. There's the easy answer. <laughs> there is a Shen in the neighborhood. Does land the Taunt Creed, is stuck in the bush. Nothing doing. One, one more shot. There you go. Yeah, so holding it off for him, he's able to pick up that kill. And uh, I thought they were going to go in for mid for a second, but um, you know they end up uh, backing off because of the pressure that uh, Graves is putting on bot. They want to make sure they could support him. They go back and buy, and you know that's a really nice advantage. Olaf, he is mid, but Aurelia chasing him down, and so that's what Curse needs. They need to be able to follow uh, members of alternate as they're going in for fights. But this could mm. be a fight for alternate once again if they try and force this. Their AD isn't there, though. Kerf almost finds himself in a pretty bad spot, but Frown Lord helps save the day, throwing down the ultimate. Hey, you guys get the hell out. Cotton X also could be getting the taunt actually over the wall. They have the vision, they have the ward right there, but uh, gonna have a quick pause just for a moment. There may be a connection issue. Also wanna make a quick note too on, uh, on Cho'Gath. He's had four deaths so far. It's not even 20 minutes and he's already died four times. I don't think I've actually seen more than like one stack on him. A feast at like really any any t any point in time. Yeah, he hasn't been able to farm it up yet, and that's usually something you want to try and do early on as show. Um, you know, get those feast stacks so you can be a little bit more effective in fights. Particularly since they're behind right now, they're not looking to force fights, but you know he's he's saving it some uh, to make sure they can get any engages that they want. And surprising, uh, no one has oracles on either team yet. So mm. I, I think you know partially it's because of the constant fights. Both teams are maybe kind of scared that they're gonna uh, going to lose it. But uh, I think alternate in particular with the lead that they have. That's going to allow them to get the oracles and then just uh, take control of the map and clear out some of the wards. Though, really, Curse, they haven't been dropping a lot of wards. So, Alton, actually, yeah. they probably could just hold off because they can see in their inventory, they're like, there's zero wards in your inventory. I really doubt that you've dropped them all already. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> they uh, won't be doing anything. Swedish Mafia hit Cotton X's city. That's a shame. That's, that's unfortunate. But uh, thankfully enough, though, the game is unpaused <laughs> and we'll get back in. We're zooming here with this push coming from alternate here in the mid. Just a few more shots in that mid tier one should actually go down, but Angish is a little bit angry, looking for hooks. There's the Sona ult back on up. Orion ult got to keep everyone still, but Angish going to be the first one to go down, followed up by the Cho. Nothing new there. Tanking the turret for Olor, taking one shot too, and that is two quick kills. Easy underneath tower. Kreetson's a little bit late to the party, but there goes the Ignite down on the Feral Lord. He has some missiles. Wayward go for Ari, and he's devoting himself to his Valkyrie on in. Does get the kill, but he will not be able to get out of it. Cotton X, though, very low. Super Rays wants oh, something. Oh, Metal X is cleaning up here. He he's going to be able to get extinct as well. That's a huge uh, turn for them. Just barely not able to finish that ace. Extinct is the only one here left to defend the tier one in mid and uh, wait for another mini wave oh, and that man. tower should be down pretty quick. But you have no more mana left, Oriani. You cannot continue that poke. No more shields for you either. One, two, three. There you go. Kerp <laughs> stealing it with the undertow. What a jerk. Yeah, Extinct trying to protect the tower when it was going to go down. Herkbot, he has that Oracles. He's trying to chase down Metalex. He's actually just barely oh, not going to land the rupture. Metalex hitting that flash. Uh, so he's going to go in. He might actually be able to alt Leo from Korea with the silence as well. He has no mana. Anna, so he picks up that kill. Uh, yeah. It's a nice little advantage for him. And he gets another stack. So, he does get a stack. Know, that's a nice little That advantage. was a lot of effort, though, just to get that one kill. He burned so much. He burned that flash on him, too. And I'm, 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 a, little bit, uh, I'm a little bit worried for Herfbot, though, because he, he did buy that Oracles. But he, along with Corky, 
you have the most deaths in the game. You're worried for you know the player who's one in five. Yeah, I, I would normally I, be worried. I'd I, be worried. I, if I, I was I'm worried with them. even more so now that he has an oracles. So how about that? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, that's, that is going to be a concern, but he needed it. And he did. He knows he can just play, they can play defensively right now. They, they're they really not looking to fight because Alternate is putting on all of the aggression. Sometimes you can look to make plays, but because Alternate is being the aggressors here, uh, are being the aggressors, they really Oof. can't afford it. Kerp, he's actually close to chasing him down. Pharrell and Lord has his ultimate, but the Valkyrie gets him out of there. So I think Cho is mostly going to be looking to just clear out wards, allow his team to play passively to get back in this because they're 7k behind right now. They can't fight them right now, so... You know, yes, he could lose his oracles, but he'll probably be playing defensively enough that it won't be a risk. Right. And this also gives him some time to try and farm up in the jungle, try and build those V stacks up, try and get tanky once again. He's going to be a uh, level, he's just hit, uh, he's going to be a level 11 pretty soon anyway, so the cooldown on the feast is going to be going down shortly. So he's going to have a little bit, a uh, little bit of a quicker time to get those stacks. It's just a matter of keeping alternate out of their jungle. It's, 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 it's a chore. It's a chore just to keep Olaf out of your business at this point. Yeah, I think the big concern for Curse right now, I mean, yes, they can sit back and farm, but how are they going to deal with Graves? And it's a mm. lot of it's going to be on Aurelia. Aurelia did finish the Triforce. That's a really, you know, nice advantage for them. But other than Aurelia and then Orianna ult, they don't have any other damage. And I don't know if it's going to be enough to take down Graves now, particularly since he's so fed. He's going to have so much damage. Um, if they can't take him down and Ari, then they're, you know, probably going to lose the fights. And, yep. you know, it's, it's really going to be hard for them. They have a lot of, they have a nice single target burst, but probably not enough to grab both. There is a quick stun down in front of They're going full on hand. They want the kill on the Ari but she's too mobile with that ultimate. There is the Sona ult, but goes down for the credit. Cho out in front. You got Olaf in pursuit. Krayton throwing down a Gatling gun. Missiles behind him, too. He has to use the Valkyrie. He needs to get out of there. Does not want to take another slam to the face from Olaf. There is the Orion ult. Keeping Cotton X a little bit busy. And there is the shutdown from Cho coming down. Orion going to be the next one. Olaf does finally go down, but Metalax looking to clean up. And that is the threat of that super fed AD carry. Krayton. He's at tower. Wheel from Korea. Help a guy out. Get an uppercut. Get some CC. Get something. Anything. Where's the hook? Does not need it. The smoke screen actually going to get the ace for alternate. And Leo from Korea tanking the turret to get Metal X out of there. But, um, you know, really nice play from them. And you saw uh, Curse. They were trying to pressure it. That might be a surrender. I that think is. It is. It's the surrender, the GG. So alternate wins game number one. But you saw at the end, Curse, they wanted to try and force something. They wanted to just see, all right, well, let's see what we can make happen. You know, we're really far down. We need to make some plays. They tried to get Ari, but they couldn't with the yeah. Shen ultimate and her mobility. And that was the threat at that point in time. Both Ari and Graves were so incredibly fed. And if they didn't have the damage to take them down or, you know, mobility or whatnot, then there was really no 